All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm Robert Breaker. I'm out at the park today, and it's just too beautiful out here. They've just mowed and put out this new bench, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful day. So I thought I'd come outside today and do this week's sermon. Uh, you probably remember last week's sermon. I was walking on a trail, and the title of that sermon was Truth Matters. And I talked about how important it is to have truth, to know truth. Uh, we live in a day and age where very few study. And that's a shame. Because the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to get in this book. and We need to know what it says. Because what we're seeing today is a lot of political unrest and riots and, and a lot of people fighting one another, uh, burning down buildings, just crazy, crazy stuff. And a lot of people are saying, well, what is this? What is this? Police violence, violence against the police, and things like that. And people are like, what's going on? What's going on? Well, if you know your Bible, you know what the problem is. And I don't want to get too into it. <laughs> I try in my videos to, to, well, just tell it to you plainly. I believe in plain preaching, plain speaking, and just saying what's going on. So the easiest way to explain it is communists. Communism is trying to take over our country and they're doing what they do. Racial strife, gender strife, division. Uh, what does the Bible say? Well, a house divided shall not stand. And so they're trying to present their lies to you, hoping you'll accept their agenda because their agenda allows them to do what they're doing because they say, oh, well, we're just trying to get justice by some made up thing that they think happened. But when you see the truth, you see, no, no, they're deceived and they're lying and they're telling lies to others. So to me, truth matters. Truth matters. Well, today, I thought I'd talk about the subject of souls matter. Uh, there's a group out there, and you've probably heard of them, and they run around and they yell, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And I think about that and I say, well, to me as a minister, as a preacher of the gospel, what ma matters the most to me is to see people saved. So I say souls matter, black souls matter and I want to see people get saved. To, the, to me, that's what it's all about. What good is it to live this life and then die and go to hell? It was a wasted life. So if all that matters to you is a person's life, what about the afterlife? What about when they die? Isn't it important that they have a better afterlife than the life they live now? <laughs> Well, to me, as a Christian and someone who knows the Bible and knows what it says about the afterlife, I say wholeheartedly, yeah, yeah, eternity matters. It's more important. This life, as we read in the book of James, is just a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We don't have many years in this life and in this world. Some of my best friends have lately passed away. Just the other day, I got a text. One of my best friends, has, he, he passed away. He's in a much better place now because he was a Christian man. And so what I want to talk about today is what I believe is the most important thing. I'm so very tired of lost people writing the agenda and telling us what we can and can't talk about. When the Bible is the final authority and it writes the agenda, it tells us what we should be talking about. And we shouldn't be talking about, well, this group matters more than this group or this person or that per we should be talking about eternity and how God the Creator matters and what He says is what we need to follow and listen to. So today I just want to bring you a little bit of a sermon entitled Souls Matter. I'll start today with um, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and I don't want to go too terribly long but I do want to give you as much scripture as I can. And I want to ask you, can you agree with that message that souls matter? Can you agree with me? <laughs> you see, the world seems to be running around wanting to unite on everything. Well, as a Christian, there's some things that I can't unite with. I can't unite with sin and sinners. But there is a message that I can unite on, and I hope you can unite with me on. And that's the message that God created us, and God is willing to save us and take us to heaven if we come to Him the way He said to come. Because He says that we matter to Him. God is a wonderful God, and to Him, people matter. So the question is, do you know that God? Does it matter enough to you to try to find out who He is and what He says? Does the afterlife matter? You see, some people are so carnal and so fleshly and so selfish that they don't care about what happens after death. All they care about is now. 
and they're like, I gotta have it now, I want it now. That's a carnal, selfish person who's not thinking about forever and eternity. There is a thing called eternity. Where will you spend it for all eternity? So 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. What's amazing to me is how often the Bible says all men, all men, all men. In the Bible, it's about all. In God's eyes, all lives and all souls matter. God wants all to be saved. But we live in a day and age where they don't want all. They, they want to make it about one specific group. And they want one group to matter more than another group. I'm so thankful that my God doesn't do that. I'm so thankful that God in heaven doesn't look down and says, Now I like this group and I hate that group. <laughs> no, he says, I love them all enough to die for their sins. For I want them all to be saved. What a great God. What a great God. Verse 2, For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Don't you wish we had peace? We used to, but now there's groups running around burning down whole towns, killing each other. Where's all the peace? Well, it comes from godliness and honesty, to be honest with you. <laughs> Verse 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved. All men matter to God. All souls matter. He wants all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Jesus Christ is the ransom for all. Color does not matter to God. So as a minister of the gospel and a believer in the Bible, then color doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is your soul. Where will your soul spend eternity? Heaven or hell? Smoking or non-smoking? Where will you go when you die? Whereunto I am ordained a preacher, verse 7, and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and charity. I want to be like Paul. Paul said, be a follower of me. So I try. I try to tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. I just want to give the truth. I will therefore that men everywhere lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. We're not supposed to be wrathful and angry and hateful. Yet a lot of people today, their hearts are full of hate. And it's sad. I preach against that. The Bible is against being hateful and angry and mean-spirited. The Bible says we shouldn't hate someone based upon the color of their skin. We should love everyone and love them enough to care about their eternity and want to see them go to heaven with God, not to the other place. That's what we should want. So that's what the Bible says there in that passage in 1 uh, Timothy. Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians. Let me tell you something. The, the sermon here that I'm giving you today is entitled, Souls Matter. Now realize when I talk about the soul, the human soul, some people don't understand what a soul is. So as always, we need to go to the Bible for the answer. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and verse 23, the Bible tells us that we are made up of three parts. And it's interesting because God is one God, but He consists of three. We call that a trinity. But the Bible term is Godhead. The Godhead is one God that consists of three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth, the Bible says. So when you look at God, you say, wow, God consists of three. And the Bible says that God created man in His image. We're made after God's image. Now, of course, we unfortunately read that, that Adam fell into sin. And the Bible tells us that we're all in the image of Adam after that, which means we're born with a dead spirit. And that's why we need to be born again, born of the Spirit. We need to be saved so that the Holy Spirit can come back into us. When we're born, we don't have the Holy Spirit. But the Bible is very clear that we consist of three. And those three parts are, and we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. We have three parts, a body, soul, and spirit. The body is what you see. It's my flesh. And it's a body with a sinful nature. It's a fallen body. 
That's why I'm waiting for the rapture and my glorified body, which the Bible promises me to have. But this body, because it's corrupt, because it comes from a sinful um, parents, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, my body is temporal and mortal and it will die. But I am not just my body. The Bible tells me very plainly that I have a body, yes, that's the outer shell, but inside of me is the soul. And the soul is who I am. And the Bible is very clear. Matter of fact, the book of Genesis, it talks about when Rachel died, it said, for her soul was in departing. When you die, your soul, which is you, leaves your body. And it goes to either up or down, heaven or hell, the place of the redeemed or the place of the eternal place of torment for those who died without Christ because they rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. Heaven or hell. So your soul is what's inside your body that is you, that is eternal, that is immortal. And it lasts forever. And so when you die, that soul leaves. Now inside we have a spirit, but the spirit is dead when we're born and it's empty. When you trust Christ as your Savior, well then the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. But the Bible clearly teaches that inside of every human being is a soul. So death is not the end. Death is just the beginning of a new life. And it's either a life of eternal uh, bliss with Christ or a life of eternal suffering and damnation in hell. And it all is determined upon whether or not you receive Christ Jesus as your Savior by faith in the blood atonement of what He did to pay for your sins. To me, this matters. To me, this is the most important of all messages ever in the history of the world. Where will your soul go when you die? And yet all over the news media, they will not touch it. They will not speak of eternal life and the afterlife and what the Bible teaches about going to heaven or sadly ending up in hell because you don't come to Jesus. Well, I will not remain silent. I must teach what the Bible says because the Bible teaches that you have a soul and you matter to God. He loved you enough that He died to save your soul so that you may go to heaven with Him. So the question is, does it matter to you? I got four points today. I got a lot of verses. I'm going to run through them. And I want you to see what the Bible says. While Jesus Christ was here back in the book of Mark, He said something very profound. And in the book of Mark, chapter 8 and verse 36, Jesus says this about your soul. Remember, I'm speaking today on all souls matter. I want you to think about your soul. If you can hear me and understand what I'm saying, you have a soul. And you need to think about where is that soul going to go when you die. Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, Jesus is on the earth and he's speaking and he says, For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? How do you lose your soul? Well, you die without Christ. And then when you die and your soul leaves your body, gravity, I guess, takes it down to the burning place. And you're lost, eternally lost forever. What shall it profit you if you have a good life here on this world? What if you're the richest man that ever lived? What if you take over the whole world and you're the ruler of the entire world? Who cares? So what if you still die and go to hell? You see the importance of the soul? The soul matters to God. And God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. So I have four points today, and my point number one is souls matter to God. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. All souls matter, and they matter the most to God who created us. And God created mankind for a reason. He wanted them to come to Him, find Him, and worship Him so that He could shower them with His love and mercy and, and blessings for all eternity. But a lot of people, they don't like God. They don't want God. They don't want to even think about God. The Bible talks about the reprobates who do not even want to retain God in their knowledge. To them, their soul doesn't matter. That's why they don't think about God. But look at what the Bible says, and look at how much souls matter to God. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, 
but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to perish in hell. He wants all people to come to repentance. He wants them to come to the point of salvation. Repentance means turning, means a change of mind. It's turning from unbelief to belief, from believing in your own righteousness, thinking that you'll get saved by what you do, to realizing, no, I can't save myself. I'm trusting in Christ's righteousness and His shed blood. Salvation is through faith in what Jesus did. And Jesus didn't want you to go to hell. You know, Jesus would rather die than see you go to hell. And a matter of fact, that's exactly what He did. As He went up on the cross and He shed His blood and He spread out His arms and He said, all this I do for thee. He said, it is finished. What is finished? The payment for the sins of man so that they can now be forgiven and come to God. Your soul matters to God. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. You see, it's all about love. A lot in the world today are saying, well, we just ought to love each other and get together. Okay, you want to love each other and get together? The only way is through the love of Christ. There's no division once you're in the body of Christ. You're all going to heaven when you die, when you're saved. True love is from Christ. The Bible says in uh, John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. What great love Jesus had. God the Creator loved us enough to come down, born of a virgin, and then to die in your place for your sins. Why did He do that? Because your soul mattered to Him. And He wants to see you go to heaven. He wants to see you saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, not go to hell, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Salvation of the soul is only through Jesus Christ and none other. You see, no one else ever died for you. No one else cares for you like Jesus. He cared so much that he'd rather die than see you die and go to hell. What a loving, caring, wonderful Savior. Do you believe? Do you trust Him as your Savior? Are you saved? Does the soul matter to you? Your soul matters to God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 8 says, But God committed His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What an amazing, what an uh, awesome, just awesome God. To know that He loved me, and He thought about me. And He said, I don't want you, Robert Breaker, to go to hell. Your soul matters to me. What can I do to save you? I know I'll come down and I'll die on the cross in your place for your sins and I'll shed my blood for you to forgive you of all your sins. Now come unto me for salvation. Acts chapter 4 says something wonderful. Acts chapter 4, and the Bible is very dogmatic. But you know it has a right to be because it's been written by God who is the creator. So if he's the guy that created all this, then he's the one that, that knows, doesn't he? <laughs> You think he'll lead us astray? No, because the Bible says he can't lie. And so the Bible says in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Are you saved? Salvation is the salvation of your soul. So that when you die and you go off to the next world, you're saved. You're not eternally lost in the fires of the flames of the damned. Rather, you're in heaven with Christ for eternal bliss. That's salvation. And God loved you enough to die for you. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11. I find this a wonderful verse, a comforting verse. Salvation is believing. It's trusting in Christ, but it's also resting in Him. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus says these words in Matthew 11:28. 28. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now watch what he says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Does your soul matter to you enough to want it to be saved? It mattered enough to Jesus to come down and die in your place for your sins. So maybe you should think about, wow, if God the Creator that made everything cared enough about me to die in my place for my sins to save my soul, maybe I should look into this. Maybe I should come to Him for salvation 
of my soul. So your soul matters. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or blue or green or purple or yellow or red. <laughs> Skin color isn't what it's about. It's about your soul. Is your soul saved? Have you come to Jesus for salvation? Souls matter to God. Do you know who else souls matter to? And I hate to even talk about this, but it's in the Bible. Souls matter to the devil. You see, the Bible talks about that old serpent, Satan, Lucifer. And the Bible tells us who he is and where he comes from and how he rebelled against God and he hates God. And who he goes all over this world with one goal in mind, and that's to deceive people with lies. What's sad to me is there are a lot of people out there today who are worshipers of Lucifer. And I guess to them, their soul doesn't matter. Because when you sell your soul to the devil, Lucifer, that means you're going to be with him where he goes for all eternity. The Bible tells us that the devil's going to go to a lake of fire. And eventually the lake of fire where he'll burn for all eternity. If you come to Satan and you follow Satan, if you're a Satanist, and unfortunately many people in the world today are, if you're a Luciferian, which unfortunately many of your secret societies, they believe that they are Luciferians, that they worship Lucifer, then the Bible is true. They are of their father, the devil. And guess where they'll end up? Burning in the lake of fire with Satan. Satan understands all this. He knows that men have souls. And he understands where he'll end up. The Bible says in Matthew 25, 41, that hell was created or made for the devil and his angels. He knows that that's his eternal destiny and where he will spend eternity is in hell. So what the devil does is he goes around this world trying to deceive people, trying to tell them, oh, the Bible's not true, don't follow that book. Because what he wants is he wants people with him in hell where he's going. The old saying is, misery loves company. And the devil knows he's going to burn in hell for all eternity. So what the devil wants is people down there with him. So he can laugh at them for all eternity and say, ha, 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 you had a chance to get saved. But I didn't. I couldn't get saved. But you could have. And you chose me. Ha, 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 you. And he's going to mock and laugh at and make fun of people for all eternity that go to hell. Because he's deceived them into thinking that he could somehow give them what they, what they desired. No, there's no rest with the devil. Rest is only with Jesus Christ. In Revelation 12, 9, it talks about how the devil's goal is to deceive the whole world. And that's what the devil wants. He wants to deceive people. Let's go to 1 Peter 5, 8. The devil is like a lion, and his desire is to destroy and to devour. And that's a shame. If you really care about people, you don't want to hurt people. But all the devil wants is to hurt people and to hurt as many as he can. What's the alternative? Jesus, who loves people and cares about people and wants to see them saved. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Who's it speaking about? Verse 6, God. God really cares. To God, your soul matters, and he wants to see you saved. But there's another one out there who's evil who doesn't want you saved. That's the devil. And verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is a deceiver. The devil wants to devour you. The devil in uh, 1 Corinthians 10.10 is also called the destroyer. The devil seeks to deceive, to devour, and to destroy. And what he wants is your damnation. And he wants to see you damned for all eternity in hell. And he wants to laugh when he sees your soul burning with his in a lake of fire. So souls matter to the devil. The devil cares about your soul, but not to want to see it saved. He cares enough about it to try to deceive you. And he goes throughout all the world and he tries to deceive people. You know, the devil could just go, I don't know, sit in the backwoods of some planet like Jupiter or something and just say, well, time's almost over, so I'll just hang out here and camp out till it's done. But he doesn't do that. He's going out of his way to come and try to deceive as many as he can in order to get as many as he can to fall into hell with him. And I find that sad. The Bible says that he is the father of lies. He is the deceiver. Don't follow the devil. 
come to Jesus Christ because he truly cares about your soul. But the devil's trying to get your soul. And he's going to try with all of his being to get you to say, oh, I don't believe the Bible's true. He doesn't want you to go to this book and find out for yourself. He wants you with him for all eternity. So your soul matters to God. The devil's trying to get your soul. But do you care about your soul? And are there others that care enough about your soul? Well, souls matter to me. You see, years ago I got saved on July 29th, 1992. God saved me. I heard the gospel and I believed and I understood and I accepted Christ as my Savior, trusting in the blood of Christ. And when I got saved, I got such a joy and such a peace and I was so happy. And I remember immediately thinking, oh no, my friends, oh no, my family, oh no, people I went to school with, oh no, people I worked with, oh, oh they need Jesus too. They need salvation. They need to know how to get to heaven. Now that I'm saved, I'm excited, I'm going to heaven, but I want others to get saved too. And from that day forward, I went out of my way to do everything I could to try to tell people how to be saved. Because to me, their soul matters. And I want to see them saved. I want to see them go to heaven. I don't want to see anyone go to hell. I can honestly say I wouldn't even want my worst enemy to go to hell for all eternity. <laughs> maybe for a couple weeks, maybe for a couple months, maybe a million years. But no, eternity in hell? I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. To me, souls matter, and that's why I do what I do. I'm an ordained minister. God has called me to preach the gospel of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's because souls matter that I try to tell people about Jesus. Recently, I went downtown in Pensacola to the 17th Avenue Bridge, and I filmed it. I put the video up on YouTube of how they painted the bridge with Black Lives Matter and everything like that. And then I met a black woman there, and I said, you know, it's not just all black lives matter. To me, all black souls matter. And I want to see black people saved. And that black woman said, well, amen. I said, well, amen. Are you a Christian? Are you saved? She said, yes, I am. She said, uh, that's, that's awesome. I said, well, amen. It's not about what color you are. It's about whether you're saved. She said, that's right. Color doesn't matter to God. <laughs> wow, what a blessing. Do you have that same desire in your heart? Do you care enough about people to want to see them get saved? Do their souls matter to you? Do you truly care about other people? Paul is our apostle, and, and in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, he said, My desire is that all Israel might be saved. Paul was a Jew, and Paul wanted his own people, Jews, to be saved. And he cared enough about them to tell them the truth. Unfortunately, many of them chose not to be saved. Well, I guess you could say I'm a white guy. I don't know. <laughs> I think I have some Hispanic blood in me. I think there might even be a 1% one, 1 part Jewish in me or something like that. I don't know. But I am what I am by the grace of God. But I don't go by what I am or what color I am. When I see people, I see people. I see souls. I don't go, oh, look at that guy. He's a certain color. Well, I'm not going to talk to him about Jesus. No, I want to talk to everybody about Jesus because all souls matter. And Jesus died for everyone. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16. So souls matter to me, and I want to see souls saved. I care so much about people, and I want to be, see them saved, that I'm coming out in 100 degree weather and sitting out here in the sun talking to you, trying to tell you how to be saved. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. The Apostle Paul says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me, woe is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. Paul says, I'm not doing this for me. I'm not telling you the gospel of salvation because I want you to brag on how great a preacher I am. It's not about me. Hey, I know I'm not a great preacher. He says it's about Jesus and how great he is to die for the sins of all men. And I woe unto me if I don't go tell you how to get saved because your soul matters. It mattered to Jesus. It mattered to Paul and the early apostles. It matters to me. I want to see you saved. I want to see you go to heaven when you die. Philippians chapter 1, when we see the Apostle Paul, we see a man who really cared about souls. And he went out and everywhere he went he told people about Jesus. And if you know history, you know he changed the whole world in his day. 
So many people came to Jesus for salvation and Christianity flourished and went all over Europe and then eventually over the next couple hundred years all around the world. Because to one man, souls mattered. And they mattered so much that he gave his life, he devoted his life to not doing to what he wanted to do, not going and doing what he wanted, but saying, Lord, I, I surrender to you and what you want. And you want me to preach the gospel, so I'm going to the whole world to do that. And he did. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. How can someone say that? How can someone say, I can't wait to die. Dying is a great thing. It's a gain to me. I'll gain something great when I die. How can someone say that unless they're a Christian and they know they're saved and they know their soul has been redeemed and sins have washed away from their soul. They know their soul is going to heaven. There's great gain when you die if you're a Christian. But yet he says in verse 22, but if I live in the flesh, that is the fruit of my labor, yet I, what I shall choose I want not, for I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. <laughs> a lot of bad things in this world. The next world is the great world if you're saved. But notice what he says, Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul says the most important thing isn't me getting gain and me getting going to heaven even though that's what I want. It's going to be great over there. There's a job to do in this world and it's to go out and win people to Jesus. And that's what I'm here for. He says in verse 25, And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may, mo may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. See, it's all about the gospel, because the gospel tells us how to be saved and have eternal life and how our soul can go to heaven when we die. He says, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. You see, there are adversaries out there today. There are people in this world that are very anti-Christian. They hate Christians. And they're trying. Matter of fact, today I got up and I was looking at the news. And this Antifa group is running out and they're burning down buildings and they're pulling down statues. And many of the statues that they're pulling down are old Confederates who were Christians. To me, what they're doing is attacking Christianity. And for, for years I've been saying they're attacking Christianity, they're attacking God and the Bible because they're communists, they're Marxists, and Marxists hate God and the Bible. And people say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Today on the news, they came out, hey, how you doing? And they said, we Antifa, we want to burn down churches and we want to pull down statues of Jesus Christ. Because they said he was a white racist. They're so crazy, they're so nuts. They don't even know what they're saying. But they're really showing who they are. They're led by devils. They want to attack God and the Bible. Do you know Jesus Christ wasn't white? He was Jewish. <laughs> they don't even know what they're saying. All they want to do is attack God and Christianity. And that's what their true goal is. So we as Christians, we need to realize that's the enemy. It's the anti-God movement. That's the communists. But the, I care enough about them. I want to see them saved. God died for communists too. And God wants communists to be saved. And boy, when a communist gets saved and look back on their life, they say, boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I evil. I was out there full of hate in my heart and burning down stuff. And do I shouldn't have done that. When you get saved, you don't have hate in your heart. You don't go and, and, and deface a public property. You don't burn down things. You say, yeah, yeah, I want peace. I don't want this. Communism is revolutionary overthrow of governments. They use red as their color. And they love the color red because it's the color of blood. The Bible speaks of such people, their feet swift to shed blood. That's what communists do. They kill people. They try to overthrow governments. They're not of God. And the more they do it, the more they're going to show that they're the anti-God movement. Well, we that are Christians, we should, we should say we love them enough. We want to show you what God did for you. He shed His blood for you so that you can be saved. So the Bible is very clear. The Bible is very clear. Well, I could continue there in, in uh, Philippians, but I'll move on. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 15. So souls are important to me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, excuse me. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. And I do what I do because I want to see people saved. 
I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I want to see people saved. 2 Corinthians 15, 14, the Apostle Paul says this, For the love of Christ constraineth us. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because Jesus loved me enough to die for my sins in order to save my soul, now that I'm saved, I love Him enough that I want to go out and save souls. I want to go out and tell people, hey, Jesus paid it all. Jesus loved you enough to die in your place for your sins. Will you come to Him for salvation? He'll give you a mansion in heaven. You don't have to go down there to the other place. Jesus saves. Will you come to Him? Souls matter to me. My last point is this. Do souls matter to you? If you're a lost person, do you care at all about what I'm saying? Do you think that, that it could be true, what I'm saying? That when you die, you would go to somewhere else? You see, a lot of people, they're scared of dying because they say, I don't know what's on the other side. I'm so scared. I don't want to die. I don't know. Oh, I don't know what will happen. You don't have to fear death if you read and believe the Bible. The Bible tells you exactly what happens on the other side. There's two places, heaven or hell, smoking or non-smoking. And you don't have to fear because if you come to Christ, your soul is saved. And when you die, he takes you to heaven. Paul the Apostle is speaking to Christians and he says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. When you die as a Christian, your soul goes to heaven. But the Bible says in Psalms, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. If you're lost, at the moment of death, your soul leaves and it falls straight down into the fire where well, you're burned for all eternity. Do you care enough to look into this and to see if what I'm telling you is true? Do you care enough to go to the Bible and find out for yourself? Do you care enough about your own soul to come to Christ for salvation? Maybe I'm speaking to someone who's a Christian. Let me ask you this. Do you care enough about other people to tell them about salvation? Do you care enough about lost people to want to see them saved? I'm 45 years old and I've done my best ever since I got saved at age 18 to do my best to tell people the gospel and to win people to Jesus. I don't know how many people over the years I've led to the Lord, but uh, I have a list at home of, of people that I've led to the Lord and, and I quit counting at about 100. And I'm not going to count. I'll just wait until I get to heaven. But in Honduras, I was able to lead people to the Lord and started a couple churches and as I travel all over the world, I see people get saved. Some of the greatest joys I have is checking my emails and someone sending me an email and saying, Brother Breaker, I got saved on such and such a day. I've been watching your videos and it clicked and I understood and I got it and now I'm saved. What a blessing. I can't wait to get to heaven and to meet all these people that have gotten saved because their souls matter and that's what I do. That's why I do what I do. I want to see people saved. Well, let me ask you a question. If you are saved, do souls matter to you? Have you ever won anyone to Jesus Christ? If you're a Christian, have you gone forth and made other Christians? Do you preach the gospel of salvation to other people? Do you tell others how to be saved? It's wonderful to be saved and know you're going to heaven when you die. But it's even more wonderful to be saved and know that there's other people in heaven because of you because of your preaching, because of your teaching, because you want them to Jesus. Do souls matter to you? If so, go forth into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is how to be saved according to the Bible. And it goes like this. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. The word gospel means good news. Which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also you are saved. Now let me skip down to verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Gospel is all about Jesus, who cared so much about you that He was willing to come down from heaven, live 33 years without sinning one time, and then go to an old rugged cross and be nailed and tortured and whipped and beaten and die in your place for your sins. Do you love Jesus? Have you come to Jesus for salvation? If you are saved, 
Have you taken that wonderful message of the old blood-stained cross and the blood-stained gospel to the lost and dying world? Have you ever told anyone else about salvation and Jesus Christ? See, that's what it's all about, being saved. The Bible talks about how that Christ died for our sins. How did He die? Well, the Bible says He shed His blood. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. God loved you enough that He shed His blood for you. You see, God doesn't want bloodshed. God doesn't want people going around and killing other people and shedding their blood. What He did is He said, here's the message of peace. I would rather die and shed my blood for you than to you going around and shedding the blood of others. God's a God of love and of grace and of mercy and of peace. And today, yeah, amen. And today, salvation is through the blood of Christ, through trusting, through believing. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What do we believe in? What do we trust in today? Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 says, whom God set forth to be a propitiation. That word propitiation means literally the act of appeasing wrath. But it's kind of like a substitute. You see, I'm a sinner. I ought to pay for my sin. But what if someone paid for my sins in my place? What if they were my propitiation? What if they were my substitute? Well, that's what Jesus is. He died in my place for my sins. Whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. You see, Jesus Christ is the righteous one. He's the sinless one who died in my place for my sins. And the Bible says, when I trust in His blood, then He imputes to me His righteousness. And now I'm justified. Now I'm saved. Now I'm sinless in His eyes because He's forgiven me of my sins. That's the message of redemption. That's the message of salvation. It's a wonderful message. It's a great message because it's not a racist message. It's for all races. Jesus died for all men. The world we live in today, they're trying to split people up and divide people and talk about, oh, skin color and racism and oh yeah. But the Bible doesn't talk about that. The Bible talks about, no, your soul is the most important thing. And you need to prepare for the next world by trusting in the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ was spilt on the cross, not just for whites or Asians or Hispanics, but for blacks, for Indians, for all people. And God wants all to be saved. Thank God it's not a racial message. Thank God it's a global message for all men. One thing you need to know, you need to know you're a sinner. All right, I got good news, I got bad news. Good news, Jesus died for sinner. Bad news, if you're not a sinner, well then I guess, I guess you can't be saved. But the Bible says that all men are sinners. Any man that says, I'm not a sinner, he's deceiving himself. He's a liar, he just lied. You know, if you ever say, I'm not a sinner, well you just lied, that's a sin. <laughs> all have sinned, the Bible says and come short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter if you're a certain color of, of skin. All that matters is, are you a sinner? And if the answer is yes, I'm a sinner, then guess what? Good news! Jesus died for all sinners. He died for you. And you can be saved. Your soul matters, and that's why I'm giving you the gospel. So I'm going to close today with Luke chapter 16 and verse 19. This is a story that Jesus tells of a literal thing that happened. It's not some sort of a parable. It's a true story of someone who died and went to hell. And that's what I don't want. I don't want to see anyone die and go to hell. That's why I do my best to preach the gospel. But here's a man who died and went to hell. And then, while he was there, suddenly it dawned on him, oh, the message of the soul and being saved. And then suddenly he cared about others. But it was too late. You see, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. One life. Death is, is sure. Sin the curse, but Christ the cure. You must be born again. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. You see, this is the time to get saved. Because when you die, there's no second opportunity to get saved. Luke chapter 16, we read the story of a man who died without salvation. And it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at his gate full of sores, 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now look what it says. His soul went down. And it says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried. He's crying in hell. And he cried, and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and, and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham saith unto them, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Here we have a story of a man who died, a rich man. And his soul didn't matter to him. He didn't care about God and the Bible and the things of, of God. He only cared about the things of the world. And he died, and the Bible says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Three times the word torment is used. And he's burning in hell and he says, I just want a drop of water. It hurts the pain. I can't take it. Father Abraham said, I'm sorry, buddy, but there's no chance to get out. You had your chance. You should have taken it. You should have trusted Christ when you could have. He said, well, my five brothers are still alive. What about them? Can they be saved? Yeah, yeah, they could. He said, please send someone to them. Tell them about this place so they don't come here. Unfortunately, the people in hell can't talk to us today. We can't hear their voice. We can't hear what they have to say. But we can read the Bible about what happened and what the people down there were thinking. And the rich man down there was saying, King, you know what? My brother's souls matter. I lost my soul. I'm down here suffering and burning. But I care about my brothers and I don't want to see them come there. How about you? Do you have a brother? Does his soul matter to you? Do you have a sister? Do you have a mother? Do you have a father? Do you have family? Do you have friends? Do you have co-workers? Do their souls matter to you? Do you care enough about them to tell them how to be saved? Does their soul matter at all? If so, we'll take them to this book. Show them in the Bible. The Bible says there's heaven and there's hell. And that you need to make a choice. You need to decide. Will I come to Jesus for salvation? Or will I reject Jesus? And will I go down there for all eternity? The choice is yours. All I can do is be the messenger. To me, souls matter. The question is, do they matter? to you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.